الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله إمام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين الذي بعث إلى الأحمر والأسود والذي تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سلك طريقهم وسار على نهجهم واقتفى أثرهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam It is imperative that the first thing we remind ourselves of is the consciousness of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala It is known as taqwa Allah فَإِنَّ مَنِ اتَّقَ اللَّهَ وَقَاهُ Whoever has the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will save him from the difficulties of this world as well as the disasters of the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him a life filled with discipline filled with contentment filled with that which will please his eyes and his entire system because he has made an effort to please his maker you make an effort to please your maker i promise you by the same maker he will make you pleased in this world and the next allah does not promise you the millions and the billions allah does not promise that you will have the best house in tobago Allah does not promise that you will have the best wife in Tobago or the best motor vehicle or the highest salary but he promises you contentment with what you have been given wallahi if you understand the plan of Allah your life in this world is a mere few years it will not expand beyond that it will not expand beyond that make use of these few years to earn the hereafter in a way that you will never ever regret so therefore discipline yourselves my brothers and sisters understand that those who have let go of themselves those who club every day or every weekend those who abuse themselves and those who abuse the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who've lost themselves in drugs and alcohol and in womanizing adultery fornication gambling and everything else that glares us in the face those who've allowed themselves to be lost in all of that wallahi as much as it all looks like it's part of happiness they are only depressed upset sad angered they have lost contentment and they don't know where to go they are like in a dark tunnel and they don't understand in which direction they should be walking may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us so my brothers and sisters take a look at those who have embraced the world beyond limits and you will find they themselves are depressed the pop stars of the globe why do you think they are called pop stars because there comes a time when they pop may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us it's a reality if you would like the happiness search their lives they are not happy so many have already committed suicide so many have gone through divorce so many are so depressed so many have sleeping pills because they cannot sleep and take a look at those who have allah but they may not have the cash of the dunya they have the happiness of allah they are sleeping so well even if it mean under a tree that's the plan of allah so allah says if you strive to please allah allah will give you a gift known as contentment subhanallah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this contentment when we say we are believers the speech we have is very different from those who do not believe and this is why when you look at a true believer you see contentment and peace in the way he walks in the way he talks in the way he interacts in the way he does business in the way he handles and manages, manages his family وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
when they walk on the earth. Subhanallah, you witness, you see, they are the ones who walk on the earth in a very humble manner, filled with humility, filled with dignity. They do not have an air, no matter what they have. Today, we own a little bit. Suddenly, we develop a chip on our shoulders. We are in a position of authority. We begin to belittle the others who are around us, not realizing, Wallahi, there are people who have had much more than anything we will ever have. And Allah snatched it away overnight. What happened to them? They became depressed. Because when you have, the test is, how does it affect your attitude? It's not bad to be the richest man. May Allah grant us wealth. Say, Ameen. But together with that wealth, may Allah give us closeness to Him, humbleness, humility. When you are a man in authority, a woman who has been blessed with something, you need to be humble, learn to greet one another. Today we enter the masjid, Wallahi, we don't like to greet. Let's change that. If we don't change that, how can we call ourselves members of the ummah? No matter who you are, I will greet you. You are my brother. You are my sister in faith. And I greet you genuinely. Salamu alaikum, my brother. That alone means may peace be upon you. I'm making a prayer for you. May peace be upon you. You say, wa alaikum as salam. Imagine the angels, subhanallah, ameen to this beautiful dua. I will have peace in my day. What are you looking for? My brothers and sisters, what am I looking for? What are you looking for? Are we not looking for peace? Wherever there are pieces and no peace, the people are dying like flies. No matter what they own, if there's no peace, they have nothing. But if they own nothing and they have peace, they have everything. This is why Islam, we always say, it means peace. It stands for peace. It teaches peace. It has in it peace. Its followers are peace. What else? The difficulty is, we spelt that peace as Muslims, different from the peace it was actually meant to be. So it was meant to be P-E-A-C-E -E, and we spelt it differently. P-I-E-C-E. -E. That's what happened to us. So when we say Islam is peace, it means everyone is in pieces. We don't get along with our brothers, with our fathers, with our children, with our in-laws. And we claim to be Muslimin. What Islam are you following? My brothers, my sisters, I plead with you passionately to change this. Change it for the sake of Allah. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. A true believer is he whom all the others are saved from the evil and harm of his tongue or hand. We cheat each other. We steal from each other. We deceive each other. We don't greet each other. We commit adultery. We go to the clubs. We gamble. We, co we commit so many crimes. We are hooked onto drugs and alcohol. We cannot quit it. And we are still saying, I'm a Muslim. Well, you're lucky to be a Muslim. Because when you're a Muslim, you're tapped on your shoulders and reminded, my brother, my sister, turn back to Allah. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind and keep reminding for the reminding will definitely benefit those who are believers. When you commit a sin, what is the difference between a believer and he who does not believe? Do you want to know? I tell you, when a disbeliever commits adultery, he's excited, he's happy. He does it, he has no regret. He's looking forward to the next episode. When a believer commits adultery, he regrets it. He feels that was a waste. I shouldn't have done that. That's a sign that you believe. It's a sign that you have a connection with Allah. If you did not have a connection, and if you did not feel accountability, there would be no regret. And this is why regret from a sin is a sign of a believer. So when you've committed a sin and you regret, thank Allah. Because a disbeliever does not regret. Someone went into the club, did whatever they had to, committed a sin here and there. And you know the list of sins is endless. And he feels at night, Astaghfirullah, I shouldn't have done that. That's a good sign. What will it lead you to? It will lead you to say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Allahu Akbar. What else will it lead you to? It will lead you to say, I don't want to do that again, Oh Allah. 
help me, strengthen me, make me strong. It shows you have a link with Allah. You're a believer. So be happy. Because the disbeliever is he who doesn't bat an eyelid. And this is why it is said when you commit a sin once and you're a believer, you regret. Commit it again, you regret. Perhaps a little bit less. A third time, the regret is even lower. When you get used to committing the sin, the iman goes from your heart. Until one day something big happens and Allah brings you back on path. Or you come back on path by the mercy of Allah because of something that happened in your life. This is why my brothers and sisters, you know when we came onto the earth, have you ever asked yourself, why are we here? Have you asked yourself, why am I on earth? Do you want to know what the Quran says? Surah Al-Mulk, a lot of us read the Quran. The Quran tells us why Allah created death and life. Do you want to know? الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ Beautifully put. It is He, Allah, who created death and life in order to test you. That's why He created you, to test you. This whole life is all about a test. And I can prove to you how it's a test. You did not choose what color you were going to be, where you were going to be born, whom your parents would be. You didn't choose any of that. You did not choose a lot of the circumstances surrounding you. Allah put you into your exam. Your examination is unique. And you were taught the ropes up to the age of puberty after which you began to face test upon test. So don't think life is supposed to be rosy. Don't think that life is supposed to be something where you are meant to enjoy every day. You will have pockets of enjoyment. Perhaps when you visit Tobago, you might enjoy yourself a little bit. Subhanallah, within the limits of Allah, you will see the qudra, the beauty. But it's a test from Allah. He will throw into that so many different types of challenges to see what you do. He will expose you to the opposite sex to see. He will make it easy for you to commit a sin in order to see, do you hold back? If you hold back, you passed it. When you have learnt at school and you know the answer of 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 plus 2 is 4 and 4 plus 4 is 8. What happens? At the end of the year they ask you the questions in the examination. They taught you throughout the year. Then they ask you 1 plus 1 equals A, 2, B, 3, C, 4. What's the answer? A, B or C? A. We know it's A but we put B. We know it's A but we put C. That's what we do. You know if you commit the sin, that's what's going to happen. You know if you abstain from it, it's the correct answer. Allah said, we're just watching. We created you to test you because you're going to die just like those more handsome than you have passed away, more powerful than you have passed away, more in greater authority have already gone. You're just another number and so am I. You held back, you win. That Allah says, I created you to test you. If this world was meant to be a place where you're supposed to be having everything, trust me, there would be no point of having a paradise. Because if Allah says, when you die, I will give you paradise. You will get whatever you want there. A person might say, well, I've already got what I want here. That's what a person would say. So Allah says, no, no matter who you are, you will face challenges. I will give you and see what you do. I will take away from you and see what you do. Every one of us has challenges of health. Not a soul on earth can say from birth to death, they did not have a health problem. Not a soul. Why? Allah's plan. Allah says, I put you here to test you. When I give you good health, did you fulfill your obligations? When I took your health away, how did you react? Did it make you despondent or not? And I tell you, when Allah does what we perceive as negative things, it's actually a gift for the believer. How? The hadith says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a worshipper, He tests him. He puts in his life difficulty and hardship because that difficulty and hardship will bring a believer closer to Allah. 
tell me, a lot of us, maybe we just come to the masjid for Jumu'ah. Reality. Suddenly, your diagnosed cancer. May Allah grant shifa to all those who are sick. Say, Amin. Suddenly, you are granted a gift known as cancer. May Allah protect us. Why do I say a gift? <gasps> you are shocked. When you are shocked, what happens? You are sad. The doctor says you have four weeks to live. You are there for Dhuhr. You are there for Asr. You are there for Maghrib. You are there for Isha. You become a Mu'adhin in the Masjid. And you are there for Tahajjud. Allahu Akbar. What brought you to the Masjid? Sickness. Had it not been for that, you would have been in the club, in the pub, and elsewhere. Maybe. Possible. So was that a gift or not? If you died four weeks later, and you were a person who died with the Quran in your hand, were those four weeks or four years, or right at the end, not the best years of your life? But you were sick. You were ill. What brought you to Allah? Sickness. That's why Allah says, when He loves someone, He puts difficulty. You were a wealthy man, suddenly riches to rags. What happened? You came to the masjid. You grew your beard. You started dressing, you know, in a different way. You changed your life. Why? Hey, I need the help of Allah. Oh, ya Allah, ya Allah. Where were those hands last year? Oh, they were nowhere. They were holding bottles of alcohol. That's what happened. That was the gift of Allah. My brothers and sisters, change your life. We are one family. Life is too short to hate one another. Learn to love. Khairun nas. Anfa'uhum lin nas. The hadith says the best of people are those who are most beneficial to the rest of the people. Why? Because just like if a person shares a mother and a father, they are known as brothers and sisters. Similarly, when a person shares the same maker, we are brothers and sisters in humanity. So I have rights upon you. Why? He who made me made you. Done. I love you because you are my brother. I don't care whether you come from Zimbabwe or Trinidad and Tobago or Trumpland. I'm not interested. You are my brother and sister. That's what it is. There are rights I will fulfill. You may have your weaknesses. Guess what? I will have mine too. You will help me. I will help you. You will not judge me. I will not judge you. When I say judge here, I'm talking of something evil. I'm not talking about an issue where there is a judge to judge between two people. And it brings me to a very interesting point. I'm just going to add on to what I'm saying. My brothers and sisters always listen to two sides of the story. Never ever be tempted to judge without giving the others, no matter how glaring it seems, a chance to give their version. That was just a side point. So going back to what I'm saying, my brothers, my sisters, it goes beyond that. The animals that are out there, the trees, the plantation, the ocean, the water, the flora and fauna, the oceans, what lies in the oceans in terms of the fish, etc. All that creatures of the same maker, there are rights to be fulfilled between you and them. It's part of your test. It is a part of your test. So when you have one after the other, test upon test, trust me, the qualification you get is far higher, far greater. Some people were born into a problem. Already orphaned, look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa born orphaned. But he is the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, the highest in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but an orphan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His status is so high that if you don't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're sinful. Yet he was an orphan. It goes to show that if you've lost your parents, it doesn't make you a person who's disadvantaged. Perhaps Allah may love you much more. Perhaps your status may be elevated even more. That's just one example. But there are so many examples in his life. He stood upon justice firm. He lost a lot of his family members and friends. Lost them. Maybe not friends as in those who were close to him accepted the message. But those who knew of him from amongst his own tribe rejected that was a test. He was truthful. What did he do? What would we do? Give it up. Astaghfirullah. 
You try here, try there, everyone's doing this thing wrong. You also end up joining the queue and do it wrong, right? That's what we would do today. May Allah strengthen us. He did not do that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stood firm. He, <coughs> he continued. And Allah blessed him and Allah gave him more and more up to a point where, wallahi, that one man in the desert who started this shahada, this kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, today, 1450 odd years later, we are sitting here in the island of Tobago because we are his followers. Allahu Akbar. No internet, no phone, no loud hailer, no electricity, no nothing. Just a small group of people. It started. The world has been shaken. Subhanallah. Thank Allah. My brothers and sisters, as I end, I call upon you to do one thing. For the sake of Allah, become brothers once again. Learn to love one another. Resolve your matters. Solve your problems. The ummah is drowning in a certain way due to us fighting one another. Stop it. I should stop it. You should stop it. Learn to find the common points. Greet people. Talk to people. Smile at people. Don't let one or two differences make you hate one another. Look at the thousands of points in common and learn to love one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of goodness for every single one of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu innahu jawadun kareem.